Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Well, we're rapidly approaching the end of the home and away season with only two games left against the Roos and the Blues. Coming up in today's show, the other reason why Rory Sloan is counting down the weeks. But first, football history is slowly disappearing at Westlakes. Demolition of Footy Park is underway with the grandstands starting to come down. For 40 years, it was the home of South Australian football, where champions grew up, dreams came true, and premierships were won. So let's remember some of that history and look at what the future holds. SANFL Grand Final 1976. Sixty-seven thousand fans cram into football park to watch Sturt beat Port Adelaide. It was always the official attendance record, but police estimates were closer to eighty thousand, with the crowd spilling onto the ground itself. Four decades later, the long deserted stands are coming down. Memories are all that's left. One of my favourite ever ones was uh, a State of Origin game. So I'm, I'm playing State of Origin as a young kid and there's Stephen Kernahan, John Platten, Craig Bradley, the Jarman boys uh, in that side and playing against the Vicks on Footy Park um, was fantastic. Amy Stadium, brilliant. Football Park was Andrew McLeod's home for his entire 340 game career. He'll always remember his second game at the ground. Probably one of those um, those moments where you you know you put yourself on the map um, in, in terms of, you know, it was, it was able to be in the right place at the right time, kicked a winning goal against um, uh, Ray Jenke, you know, beating him to the footy. From his Crows workplace, McLeod will be able to witness the stadium's demolition over the next eight months. Only the SANFL's tavern will stay. It, it's a, a bittersweet day there. It, it, it's been a, a wonderful time here at Football Park and at the same time this is an asset which will become a new asset for football as uh, the demolition then turns into uh, the sale of the land which turns into a future fund for football in South Australia. Developers will pay the league $71 million for the land over the next 13 years. Some of that will help reduce debt. The rest will benefit the SANFL clubs. As for the Crows, the club headquarters remain and players will continue to train on the Oval. It doesn't have any impact on us because the um, you know, reality is we've got a 30 plus year lease uh, here at West Lakes and uh, you know, we've got a great uh, training field here that's uh, uh, elite in terms of its, uh, its service and um, you know, fortunately it's maintained to, it to a good level. The redeveloped site will include an aged care facility, library, childcare centres and 1,600 houses. A walking track will be laid around the Oval and the surface itself will be community space outside of Crow's training times. So as a new era begins, a couple of final recollections. Firstly, the Round 7 2000 Showdown. And welcome to Football Park here in South Australia. This is Showdown number 7. Showdown, we come from behind um, and, and um, we played a really good, you know, a, a really awesome last quarter. Uh, we were able to string some goals here. I think I kicked one and, and Peter Vardy kicked one late as well that um, got us across the line. My first ever mini league game that I played there, so I don't know how old you are, seven or eight. And I actually kept, and this is no word of a lie, the grass off my boots in the bag for I reckon 10 years. Unbelievable it was. Fading memories for Ben Hart and all football fans. memory is as a spectator watching Stephen Kernahan kick 10 goals against the Vicks in the 1984 classic State of Origin match. Well, when we look back on highlights of the 2018 season, we'll vividly recall Rory Sloan's key goal against Geelong right after he re-signed for another five years. The crowd's reaction showed just how much he's loved by Adelaide fans. Those feelings, of course, are reciprocated by Rory as we discover in this chat brought to you by Revolution Roofing, when we'll also touch on his thoughts about becoming a dad later this year. Always been team first in everything we've done, whether that be playing, um, stuff around the footy club and everything, but this was a decision that was going to affect me and my family, and that's Belinda and I for the next fair few years. So 
you have to be a little selfish with that and really take the time to, and that's what we did, we wanted to take the time to really, to really analyse everything and, and to, to weigh up what our life will be like, especially being away from parents and family and that kind of thing. There's so much stuff being said and the only people who ever knew what was going on was Belinda, myself, Bird and Fags who we stayed really honest and open with the whole time and yeah those guys in particular I'm really thankful for being able just to be so honest with them and the, the club was amazing being able to give some space and just some time to think through what we needed to. Looks at back inside the 450, really slow. I'm feeling really good about parenthood. I started off a little nervous but uh, the longer it's gotten, I'm just starting to get really excited now. And yeah, these are uh, these coming weeks I just can't go quick enough. I'm just excited to find out what it is, boy or girl. I've got no idea. We've got no idea. So it's going to be exciting times. And to have so many newborns at the footy club this year, I think we're coming into about the eighth or ninth or something this year, which is um, which is pretty incredible. And a lot of them are very good friends. So it's going to be nice for these kids to grow up together. Well, Sam Jacobs and Josh Jenkins are already first-time fathers this year with Rory and Andy Otten joining them soon. AFL expansion is one of those topics that's seldom out of the headlines. Earlier this season, when both the Suns and the Giants were struggling, critics argued the league's expansion had gone too far. On the other hand, Tasmanians have been crying out for a team for years. So, Mark, does Tassie have a case? Well, they do. And in a perfect world, if you're starting a new league, you'd have a team in Tasmania. But unfortunately, when the expansion happened, it uh, was more earmarked for, for non-traditional AFL states. So it was Queensland and Western Sydney in particular that got the nod. Unfortunately, they're left now just to uh, be supported by Hawthorne and North Melbourne who play something like eight games down there a year. Well, from what we've seen so far, do you think the expansion has been too ambitious? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? When you look at both clubs, GWS, I think, are going really well and mm -hmm. they look to, um, you know, 25,000 members they announced last week. They've got lots of sponsorship. The Gold Coast Suns are at the other end of the spectrum. They're right at the foot of the ladder and, and don't look like improving anytime soon. So, it, to me, it comes down to uh, how they've been wheeled out and you've got one good, one bad. Well, of course, the quality of the competition is so important. Are there enough good players to warrant 18 teams? Well, I think there is, and I'm a bit of a believer And if you need good players, just put young men into an elite system and you train them. There's plenty of examples of, you know, rookie-listed players or players coming from state leagues that have been there for a while. Once they get into the AFL system, they can really develop. So I'm not so much worried about that. I'm more worried about how the, um, the expansion teams have been managed. All right, thanks, Mark. Of course, uh, plenty to consider for Gil McLaughlin and Andy's team. Well, do stay with us. Still to come on The Crow Show, a champion among champions. In a season dotted with disappointments, it's obvious that the Crows senior side sorely missed Brody Smith. But he hasn't been missing from the Crows show, where he's been amused by some of the club's youngest fans. All thanks to Thomas Farms. Welcome to Thomas Farms Junior Jams. This week we've got Ava. Hello Ava. Hi. How old are you? I'm eight years old. Eight years old. Do you play football? No, I play Auskick. Do you have a favourite player? Eddie Betts. Eddie Betts. We've had that answer a lot. If you could take an animal from the zoo, what would you take and how would you take it? I'd get like um, a meerkat. Yep. <laughs> and um, I'd just like put it in the front seat with me. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite subject at school? Maths. What do you like about maths? I just like um, how it's challenging and um, I like solving the problems in it. Okay, so what's five times five? Twenty-five. Bang. Well done. If you had a million dollars, what would you buy? I'm going to get a meerkat. A me <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> and last one, what's the naughtiest thing you've done? <laughs> that sounds like trouble. Lots of naughty things. Really? <laughs> What's one you can tell us that won't get you in trouble? I don't know, I've done lots of naughty things before. <laughs> okay, we'll let you go. Thanks for joining us.
Next Sunday, when Adelaide's 98 Premiership side holds their reunion, it'll be another occasion to salute master coach Malcolm Blight. Apart from those back-to-back -back Crows flags, he's a Premiership player with North Melbourne, a Brownlow medalist and Coleman medalist. Few could match his skills as a player and overhead marks were a feature, as we recall in this High Flyer segment brought to you by Flight Centre. Ever a mark should be taken, he should take this one. He pushed Wilson out, but it's allowed to. And that's his fourth mark. He kicked it back towards and up on Malcolm. Malcolm, a mercurial, brilliant, delightful. I think there was one uh, playing for North Melbourne at uh, Footscray, the Western Bulldogs Oval at Whitten Oval, and, which is now called. And Gary Dempsey was actually rucking for the Bulldogs, and Barry Goodingham, six foot seven, six foot eight guy. So the two massive blokes on a kick out. And. Um, I went for a little jump up the back. The following week in the football record in Melbourne was me sitting on the back of two six foot eight, six foot nine blokes. So I think probably from a height point of view, that was probably as good as I did. Punt kick up high blokes. Magnificent mark the way he hangs in the air. And I used to practice off a wall as a kid, jump in the wall and jump up and grab the ball and land on your feet. My heroes could all mark, so when I watched them as a kid, I wanted to be like it as well. There was a great full forward for Port Adelaide called Rexy Johns, who played in a lot of their premiership teams. He was a terrific player, and lived, his parents lived behind me, so that's how it happened. And there was a guy at Woodville, my team I grew up with, Bob Simmonson, who was a wonderful, wonderful player. From behind, it's like to pull the ball out of the pack, and casually goes onto his left boot to bring it across to Wolf Bob Simmonson. Uh, he could take a mark and kick in left foot and right foot, so he, he was my next hero, yeah. Simmonson has one bounce. The the Maybe we'll see a few more high marks. I mean, I think blokes can still do it. Gary took that great mark over Gary Pert at the MCG. Oh, Did he mark it or not? It was a pretty good jump and came down, but Mods, I remember Mods, he could really jump. If you gave him jumping room, he'd jump all over you. And we can't forget that while playing for his old Woodville club in Adelaide, Blight won both the McGarry and Ken Farmer medals. When we return, why this man represents the life and soul of the club. Recovery from a long-term injury requires as much mental tenacity as it does physical toughness. Brody Smith can attest to the enormous strain that rehab places on the body and mind. In this segment, brought to you by the Breakthrough Mental Health Research Foundation, Brody takes us on his 10-month journey back to full fitness. <laughs> It's tough to sit on the sidelines for a long time and haven't had many injuries so it's not something I'm used to and then um, to watch the guys run out and you know, play in front of 50,000 out here and get, get some good wins and miss out on that feeling and then also when they're not going so well this year it's um, been tough to sit on the sidelines and feel feel a bit helpless you know while you're inside doing gym stuff or you know in the pool and um, not really feel like you're contributing to the side. And Brody Smith back in the Adelaide team and the fans are feeling pretty in a, a long rehab like this, the mental side's almost um, tougher than the actual physical application. So it yeah, had some really good support around me, which I think is really important. Because if you try and do it on your own, it would just be way too hard. So um, it's really important to have some, some good connection around you and um, to be able to help you through um, whatever you're going through. And if you have any um, you know, dark times, I was able to, to open up to you know, guys around me or um, staff at, at the club and, and they helped me through. Well, in the lead up to round 22, Adelaide will celebrate Member Appreciation Round when the club shows its thanks and gratitude to more than 90,000 members. The round will be capped off with the final home game against North Melbourne next Sunday. A successful football club represents the combined efforts of so many people with a range of responsibilities. They work tirelessly with little fanfare, but the Crows are indebted to them. For example, Bill Forrestal is the long-time doorman, the first person the players see when they arrive at the ground, and he has some stories to tell. 
My job is actually titled door steward. I've been in that position for 14 years. Obviously in that time frame I started down at Football Park and have been here at Adelaide Oval for the entire time we've been here. It is very much unusual in a way. I am and my son Nick who helps me as well. We're here three hours before the game and just about every game we're here till two hours after so we're the people that the players see as soon as they come here and we're probably the last people they see when they leave. But it's not just the players, we have staff come through obviously coaches, uh, anybody else that uh, works here on game day. Straight after the players leave here and go up on the field to play, uh, my son Nick, he looks after the locker room. He gets all the, their tops, uh, all the warm-up tops, and he uh, also tidies it up. Uh, we're based up in the uh, medical room. We have any player that might be injured, certainly as serious as concussion. It's important to be up there to see what's going on, and when the players come off, we open doors. We help the, uh, the injured player come off on the stretcher. Believe me, there's a, there's a lot of teamwork goes on behind the scenes, down in the rooms while the game's on. You're watching The Crows Show. When we return, the ultimate modern day player. This season, we've been trying to identify the attributes a modern day player needs to succeed in the ever-changing game. In this segment, Toyota Hybrid Heroes, we ask Crows players what the ultimate hybrid player looks like and which skills and qualities they would like to add to their game. Sets it up, they sort of look around and say, who's coming? Well, that's who was coming. My ultimate hybrid player would be Nick Natanui. Um, just his ability to be able to be a really powerhouse ruckman, but then also go forward and um, be a, a real key option up forward and brings his power and his, um, and his strength around the contest is yeah, amazing. If I could add an attribute to my game from another player, it would be uh, probably still side bottom. Um, his ability to kick both sides of his body um, accurately is yeah, amazing and certainly a weapon that I'd love to have. Returning to our earlier topic of conversation, and is there a case for a Tasmanian side in the AFL? Well, let's hear what the fans think. I think they should, but I don't think they ever will. It's, uh, they haven't got enough money, they haven't got enough people. Oh, I think they deserve it. Uh, yes, eventually. In a way, yes, because there are a lot of supporters down there, and it saves having teams to travel over there from Victoria and it, so at least I'll have a home game there. No, just think it's too small, and I think there's enough teams already. Staying with the fans, let's find our crow in the crowd for the chance to win a merchandise pack from Toyota. Let's pick you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm next Wednesday and be ready with some photo ID. It's as simple as that. That's about all we have time for in today's show, brought to you by Foodland. Next week, we're joined by an all-time club favourite, Tony Modra, who boasts the most spectacular highlights reel. And don't forget, for all the latest news, visit the club website, afc.com.au, as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And at the same time, remember our own Twitter page, at The Crow Show. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to your company again next Sunday. At 11.30 on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.